Hey guys and welcome back. About three years ago, I posted my Fire FS7 video, which later became my all-time favorite IMs, basically my daily drivers, up until last month when I've got uh, these right here. Now, I've been talking with Fire about FS7 for a while now, and I remember sending them a long email and explaining what they should do for a better successor. Now, it's finally here. These are called Fire FS7S. But did they met or exceed my expectations? Keep watching as you'll find that out very soon. Fire started updating the look of all their IAMs for a while now, basically transforming them from regular IAMs into semi-open IAMs for a better imaging, for a better soundstage, while keeping you safer from your surroundings. Their metallic shell seems to be well made, I find it sturdy, it isn't that big as it usually happens with multi-driver IAMs, and I find them comfortable to wear in long listening sessions. They do have some of the thickest cable that I've seen on IAMs, and also some of the best conductors out there going with a silver-plated monocrystalline copper wire in a Leeds braiding that will remove all microphonics. It also uses removable audio jacks and you can easily replace that 3.5mm jack with a 44 balanced one in no time. As for tech inside them, Fire went with a newer generation 30.6mm dynamic driver that will be dealing with the low end, leaving the mid-range and treble duties to four balanced armatures. It needs to be said that these are custom armatures specifically tailored for FH7S. So these are not exactly off-the-shelf armatures as it usually happens with mid-fi IMs. Fire also added three different acoustic filters that you can change with your bare hands. I measured them all and you'll find about their performance in a minute. You'll find 19 pairs of ear tips which should fit any ears, even elven ones. My favorite ones are memory foam or spin fit, which are the most comfortable and the best sounding, at least in my case. Sound wise, while every 7 were my daily driver IMs for about 3 years now, there was one and a half thing that I would change right away with FH7. So regardless of what acoustic filters I would use, be them neutral, treble or bass, or regardless of the ear tips, there would be a big uh, rise in between 10 and 12 kilohertz. So not a small rise, actually a 10 dB rise from linearity, and that's a huge one. So not a lot of sounds are happening in that region, but the ones that will happen, those will simply pierce your eardrums, and FH7 sometimes uh, can sound quite bright and quite harsh. Now imagine making these amazing sounding IAMs like FH7 and then some ultra linear, ultra detailed uh, portable digital audio players like M17 and M11 Plus ESS. And these two aren't working that great, aren't making a great handshake because they will sound FH7 on those players quite harsh again. So that was a huge problem. That's why uh, Fire went back to the drawing board and they came up with FH7S, which don't have that rise in the upper treble. It's a much, much smaller one, about 2 dB versus 10 dB. So FH7S, uh, they simply don't have that brightness. They sound a lot more natural to me. There's a much better tonal balance, and uh, you can hear, you can listen to anything, basically, even to rock and metal and these will not ring your eardrums so hard, actually at all. The other half that I wanted to change, something that is plaguing most IMs or most regular IMs, not only the FH7, is actually the sound stage, the scale, depth, uh, imaging and so on, because most IMs are sounding inside my head and if I can choose in between IMs or desktop headphones to listen in this office, I would always choose desktop headphones because they can provide those special cues a lot more real. They can provide a speaker-like experience, a few of them. So, and of course the sound stage is just much bigger. Everything is deeper. Uh, there's more air in between the notes. Something that IMs are also doing, but not that impressive. A few years ago, 
Fio started experimenting with uh, semi-open shells and their first IM, I believe, was FD5, which I called uh, Soundstage Kings because those sounded absolutely amazing in terms of scale, uh, much, much closer to a pair of open back headphones. And of course, they moved that technology to FD7, then to FH line like FH5S, and right now, FH7S uh, also has that semi-open acoustic design, so of course they sound considerably bigger, area, there is more air in between the notes, uh, sounding a little closer to our regular open bear headphone that will remove all traces of listening fatigue, as it won't stress our brains as much. With the biggest differences out of the way, let's focus on some important aspects of the FH7S and let's start with dynamics. Now, I was one of the first adopters of the original FH7, mostly because those were incredibly fast, impactful and hard pounding in the bass. Even when comparing with some uh, pricier IMs that I had at my disposal at that time, like uh, Sennheiser IE800, like uh, Shure SE846, those were great, but uh, those were not approaching uh, uh, FH7 levels of uh, speed, impact, uh, fast decays, those just worked much better with electronic and rock tunes. And that was one of the reasons why I picked them in the first place. I can say that the S Turbo design of FH7S is again doing some miracles in the bass, because these will be pounded pretty hard in the bass, uh, these will be pressing the gas pedal to the floor in terms of speed, so very impressive in these regards. However, since they have a semi-open design, some energy is actually leaking out outside their shells. And what was a very solid 10 out of 10 transit response from the FH7 right now sits at uh, 9 out of 10. So not a massive difference, not a huge deal. These will still deliver a tremendous impact into your eardrums, but not as much as FH7. On the other hand, these were so much airier and bigger sounding. I kept telling you over and over again in my FD5 review, in my FD7 review, FH5S review, that those are quite amazing in terms of scale and soundstage, mostly because they have that semi-open acoustic design. And you can easily add the FH7S in the same short list of IMs that are sounding amazing in terms of scale. Now, I'm writing all my reviews uh, at home. Uh, I'm filming my reviews at home in this office and in the living room, and if I can choose uh, in between listening to IMs and open bear headphones, I would always use open bear headphones because they sound more natural, they have much bigger drivers, bigger drivers can move much more air, and more air means just a much bigger scale, a much uh, nicer layering, so on and so forth. But I feel that uh, Fire is actually shrinking that gap so much with the latest IMs, uh, they can sound so much closer to open bear headphones now, and um, they can even sound at your shoulder level. They will push those sounds outside your head, especially with some live recordings. Its semi-open design is somehow detentioning the drivers, basically moving unwanted sound waves outside their shells, and that improves not only the sound stage, but also the imaging and the contour of the nodes, because everything felt a little uh, clearer, more defined on the FH7S. Now, I called their FD5 as soundstage kings, and since the same technology is sitting in FH7, FH9, these are all soundstage kings, because the sounds are no longer happening only in between your left and right ear. The most technical and the most uh, tonally correct IMs that Fire has ever released came always from the FD or FH line of IMs, out of which FH line was definitely a little more technical, clearer sounding at the cost of being less natural in the treble. Besides dynamics, I'm also crazy and quite fanatical about detail retrieval, that is also very important for me, or how much information an IM can bring to the surface. And I like that original FH7 not only for their super fast nature, impactful nature, but also for their amazing uh, resolving abilities. So basically being clearer, more detailed versus uh, pricer IMs that I had at that time. And of course, FH7S is pretty much as resolving, as clean, maybe by a little bit more. But of course, newest IM makers started catching up and the difference is not so big, but still I find FH7S 
a little clearer sounding versus its competition up to 500 US dollars. Perhaps the best part about this is that the upper treble is no longer a problem with rock and metal tunes played back on modern uh, fire dubs. Something that didn't work that great with the original FH7 put on M17 and M11 Plus is now working much better because they are sounding uh, tonally correct, uh, they are sounding more natural. And I can finally enjoy a really good Fire IM on a really good Fire DAP. Checking out its frequency response, FH7S, like their predecessors, are very good at rendering bass notes. They have a robust and powerful bass delivery, and if you like hearing things from 20 Hz and upwards, then these will do that pretty easily, even on less than perfect sources like smartphones, like tablets, like USB dongles. There is as much bass punch and bass definition as you can possibly desire without making it uh, muddy or uncontrolled, you know, dirty sounding that will not happen on the FH7S. I'm into all kinds of musical genres, uh, including aggressive stuff, and FH7S went through that electronic music as a hot knife uh, through butter because uh, it worked really great, it kept up with those uh, dynamics. It never lost a bit, uh, something that I cannot say about their FH5S, which lacked cojones, but luckily that's no longer the case with the FH7S. These are rendering mid-range information just fine. Uh, there is enough body, texture and vibration around those wooden instruments, but uh, you won't find those long decays that are needed for piano notes that are doing or that are working much better on FD7. Actually, FD7 was some of the best IMs that I've heard in terms of mid-range performance, closely followed by FH7 and FH7S. There is some sweetness and there is some naturalness, but all that comes in small doses on FH7S and that's probably the only issue that I have with them. Female voices work better on FH7 as the newest model is slightly running off the upper mid-range, not by much, but it's still there. Thor Almighty, or should I say Kratos Almighty, my prayers have been heard, and I should probably sacrifice a bottle of wine or a few kegs of beer, as finally FH7S are no longer bright or harsh sounding in the treble. These are a lot more refined actually in the treble, and they do sound like a high-end pair of IMs in this regard. They have some shimmer and they have some uh, sparkle in the treble, but none of that brightness and listening fatigue of the original FH7. You can put them on some bright recording, on some bright sounding setups, bright digital audio players, and that wouldn't be really a problem. I even like the FH7S a little bit more versus a pricier FH9, mostly because these have less dips and rises in the treble, trying to level the frequencies for a more natural tuning. I measured this in a quiet environment, and here is the raw frequency response. Here is a comparison in between them and the original FH7, and here you can see a clear difference in between their acoustic filters. The interesting part is that the filters aren't changing anything in the bass and mid-range, only the wall treble region goes up or down depending on the filter used. If you need the most natural and lifelike tuning, then the bass filter will give you that, and personally, I would never use their treble filters. If you want to know a little bit more about them, here is their distortion, spectral decay, spectrogram, and waterfall, and feel free to pause at any point for a better analysis. In the end, I could finally retire my FH7 and embrace the future. My prayers have been heard because these are no longer bright sounding, there is no longer a rise of tandem in the treble, these won't pierce your eardrums with treble intensive tracks, going with a more natural and lifelike presentation. These are fun, these are engaging, these are airy and quite uh, big sounding, shrinking the gap in between IMs and desktop headphones. Besides a gentle roll off in the upper mid range, I have nothing else to complain about these, instantly becoming my next daily driver IMs for at least a few years, we'll see about that. If you need a middle ground IM that offers you plenty of technicalities and naturalness without going into overpriced territory, then I can easily recommend you the Fire FH7S. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed my review, don't forget to like and subscribe, and as usual, listen to my tunes, be positive, and I'll see you soon. Cheers!